Just the light, huh? Gazette 3, 1112, part 1, take 1. is a social engagement. Oh. Ah, kidneys. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There we are. Sausage and bacon there. Yes. Eggs here. Of course, there's fresh kedgeree if you'd prefer it, or kippers. And if you'd like your eggs boiled or poached, we can always ring. Thank you. Tea or coffee. And we make our own toast. Mm. I thought you would have run to fresh rolls. Mm. Too fattening. Not a bad idea, though. Next time. Next time? Yes. I was thinking of giving regular breakfast. I approve of regularity, of course. You sound like a laxative advertisement. This time of the morning, I'm not surprised. You know where it is, do you? Uh, no, thanks. Mm. Did you, um, do this in London? Uh, no. No, I had neither the time nor the facilities. I was in a service flat. It was nearly a hotel. The service was terrible. But here? Mm. Here it's different. See, I find I can eat a good breakfast here. Then I have something simple for lunch, and I look forward to a good dinner. And the service? Ah, well, it's a practical regime as well. You see, Maxwell considers he's a cook. He isn't, but he can grill bacon and fry eggs, and I have soup and cheese for lunch. And Mrs Johnson arrives to cook dinner? You knew that? A good journalist? Yes. Is not at his best at breakfast. <clears throat> You'd rather not come again? Oh, your every wish is my command. Your every social wish, that is. That's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about. The social bit? A bit of the social bit, yes. Well, one thing first. Yes? Maxwell buys his fish at Henderson's. Does he? Yes, I've just said so. He shouldn't. Walford's in Sutton Street are owned by a trawler firm of the same name. They get the first pick and they're cheaper. Thank you. A good journalist. Depends upon his wife. She knows I checked. I'll tell Maxwell. Yeah, I do, but don't tell him I told you. He's not very fond of journalists. Is anyone? Probably not. But they get invited. Yes. I was surprised, though. To be invited? To be invited today. Why? Well, there's another breakfast today, isn't there? Ooh. Yes. You can almost hear it. That? Mm, you can. Just about starting, I should say. My lights are going dry. Don't you, boy? Now, remember what I told you? Don't run into that five-acre field.
You're not going to join the hunt? No. Why not? That's my business. So long as it doesn't become mine. How could it possibly? Your father belonged. You've been asked to join. Yes. You refused? Not positively, no. It's not what I've been told. Bye. Well, I don't mind telling you. On this occasion. Well? I've had a letter. A letter meant for publication. About me? About how you, a recent prominent emigre on the social scene, have decided to have nothing to do with the old, cruel, bloodthirsty sport of fox hunting. Well, at least the writer approves of my decision. A moment ago you said it wasn't a decision. Just innate caution, but he approves? She approves. Oh, dear. Have you had enough to eat? Thank you. Have you brought the letter with you? Yes. It'll be a source of great pleasure to your readers to know that Mr. James Hadley has turned his face against the cruel so-called sport of fox hunting. I've always... All those who cared about our dumb friends. Yours fervently. Tracy Lamb, miss. The Honourable Tracy Lamb. I don't know. You will. Formidable, quite wealthy, very keen. You, so? Very prolific writer of letters, not only to this paper. And she might... Not might. She will write to other papers, especially when we don't publish this. You've decided not to publish. I was leaving the decision to you. Well, it's an editorial decision. Concerning one's proprietor. I'd be stupid as well as unfair not to bring the matter to your notice. Well, you have done. Now, what do you propose to do? Listen to your decision. I'd rather listen to yours. Well, it's not easy. On one hand, your decision not to join is news. You're important in this community. Yeah. Your decision to take a stand is important. For anti-blood sport propaganda? That's one way of putting it. You mean I make a private choice? Which then becomes public. That's our problem. I don't see how you can stop it being public. Well, I could tell you... I could ask you not to publish. And if you asked me, I'd agree not to publish. And then she'd write to a lot of other newspapers, oh, she'd be would she? bound to. Adding the statement that the paper you owned had suppressed her letter. Ah. That's the way a story really builds. You'd be hitting the snide national gossip columns in no time. Well, publish the damn thing. Which would presumably not endear you to some of the locals anyway. Might be interesting enough for a national to take up. Sure. Newspaper proprietor permits reader to reveal his decision against fox hunting. Are you against fox hunting? Not especially, no. Not that I'm especially for it, either. Then join the hunt. Mm. You don't actually have to go hunting. The subscription wouldn't break you. In confidence. I'd never join any organisation that was headed by Arnold Grimley. He really is the unspeakable in full pursuit of the uneatable. No place for larking this. Mind your own bloody business. Hey, she's lame. Lazy, more like. Ought to be shot. Maybe. What do you mean? Lead her home if you can. Take her to the vet. Don't be an old woman. You can't ride her. Can't I? I suppose I could cut it a good bit, tuck it away down the column. All publicity is distasteful. But a little is less distasteful than a lot. How much coverage do you give the hunt? A uh, picture of the first hunt of the season, and the last. A couple of paragraphs about every other week. Who by? Uh, Colonel Chamberlain, mostly. <laughs> well, it gets a bit flowery, but I think he likes seeing his initials at the bottom of the column. Your correspondent was in at the kill, huh? 
Not today, apparently. Right, Take that, will you? Ooh, ten. Thank you. Hey, Did you expect him this morning? No, I said it was a working breakfast. I can imagine what he said. Silly 18th century habit, he said. Damned old-fashioned, your generation. That's what yes, he said. he'd probably be right. <laughs> I told Maxwell to make sure that the champagne was well iced. Did you? No. He's not really used to all this high life, you know. High life? <laughs> Working breakfast. The only one I've ever heard of this century was given by one of those upstart television johnnies. He served champagne. So I must do as a master's bit, eh? Don't talk to me about masters. Or Master Grimley in particular. You're very shrewd, Walters. Turn you off, did he? The bean dead to try to do any sort of thing. something, otherwise you'd still be out there shouting tally-ho or whatever it is. What he did will be in my report. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not producing a hunting issue this week. We're already stuck with this issue, you see. Mm-hmm. Oh, so-called sport. Huh. Well, silly woman, you won't be publishing that. We shall. But she's a crank. We're all a little at the mercy of cranks, Colonel. Mr Hadley doesn't choose to deny this. And the lady is determined and active enough to make a fuss elsewhere, if she can claim we suppress this. I suppose I could join the hunt. I thought you'd dis... Sh shouldn't join it now, if either you, James. Actually, I'm about to resign. Resign? And I thought reporters were the ones who could extract information. Why, Uncle? To be in my report. Which will then move to page one. No, I don't think if so. If I decide to publish it. Well, we shall certainly... What did Master Grimley do this time? Went larking. What? Larking, taking fences unnecessarily. Well? Came a cropper. Oh, splendid. No, his mount was hurt. Badly hurt? I think so. Not sure. Bound to remount it, rejoined the hunt on a lame horse. That's bad. Bad? It's inexcusable. It's heinous. And should be exposed. Yes. This will liven up the paper a bit. Who else saw this, Uncle? Everyone, I think. Everyone who had eyes to see. Yes, if they were looking in the right direction. Now, were they? Well, it must have been. Did you discuss this with anybody? No, I don't think Did so. Did you, Uncle? Well, no, I saw a pull. I pulled Steelman round and rode off. This is a working morning. And I'm thirsty, too. Come on, Maxwell. Colonel's complaining of the drought. Away, Mr. G. I'd forgotten all about that. Always blame your guests, Uncle. I've got to put up with Maxwell all the time. Ah, well done. Well done, Maxwell, but uh, not those glasses. But the book says that well, these are the, the right book ones. is wrong. Three of the tulip-shaped ones from the top of the cabinet. They didn't spend a lot of time putting the bubbles in for you to take the damn things out again. Now, you ready? Sir. Right, what do we aim at? Second tree from the left, I think. That's a great book. Yep, yep, I think so too. Damn, missed it. Will you be wanting anything else, sir? No, thank you, Maxwell. You're too dour for me this morning. I'm looking up there less of the less you do. He saith among the trumpets, ha, <laughs> ha. And he smelleth the battle afar off. The thunder of the captains and the shouting. I don't know what you're you talking about. Man to? There's a battle coming, Uncle. We're going to sort Master Grimley. And we want your cooperation, real cooperation. Down with Grimley? It'll take some sorting. Tally ho. Money down the drain. Slight difficulty. I need to see Mr. Walters. Oh, he's not back from lunch yet. Could I do anything? I don't think so. Oh, well, will you sit down? Or shall I get him to ring you? Oh, wait a little while. Then it must be trouble. Is it about the Walsley Road story? Is that a difficult subject? No, but... Oh, I'll look at it again while I'm waiting. It's been cut to ribbons already. Yeah, seems harmless enough to me. Never turn a lawyer's eyes to trouble, my dear. That's we all... grow so cautious. That's all that's left of it. We've got a very cautious editor. I'm glad to hear it. I was beginning to be... think you hadn't. Hello, sir. Nothing dodgy about that Walsley Road story now, is there? Uh, not so far as I can see. Not that story. Then which? Oh, come in, will you? Thank you. Which one? 
You really don't know? No. Then I am glad I came round. This one. Ah, the Colonel's hunt report. In full cry after Gremlin. Maybe, but he's an expert. Our expert. He offers a report, a critical report maybe, but an informed one about the last hunt. Surely it's a matter of some slight public interest and it's fair comment. Yeah, it better be. You're not suggesting that... I leave the suggestions to me. Just answer. Have you checked that report? No. Or well, don't you usually? Not when they're offered by a reliable correspondent. We'd never get anything printed if we did. The Colonel's been writing our hunt paragraph for years. And Grimley's been master of the hunt only for months. Yes. Has the tone of the Colonel's reports altered and since Grimley took over? Not that I've noticed. And you're not very observant. Colonel Chamberlain doesn't like the new master. Well, does anybody? Do you? No. He strikes me as arrogant, loud-mouthed and aggressive. Everybody knows he bought his way into being master. Those new kennels, two extra handlers, an additional kennel maid, and a vast subsidy to the hunt board. All of that may be true. Well, you know it is. Which is why you should check this report. If it's common knowledge, you can't shoot a horse in a field and drag its carcass home by tractor without it being seen. The implication, indeed, the allegation in that report is that Grimley behaved stupidly and viciously. Well, so the Colonel clearly believes. Some of the Colonel's more cutting phrases, carefully culled from his reports over the last months, will go a long way to substantiate malice. We submit, my lord, that this was a personal vendetta, carried out over a period of time, culminating in the report which is the basis of this action. All right. So your advice is? Quite specific. For your benefit, and for the benefit of the underwriters who back your insurance policy against libel, I've got it for you in black and white. Ours is a cautious profession, and I'm getting a little tired of warning you in person. So... I have to warn you, the publication of this report in its current form could lead to an action for libel which would be difficult to resist. So, what do you want cut? Well, certainly those two paragraphs. Well, that only leaves one saying the meat was held. That's right. Well, the Colonel will never forgive me. Publish that in full and your insurance company won't easily forgive you, and I dare say your proprietor won't either. Mr Hadley wants to have a go at Grimley. That can be made to spell malice too. Oh, I'm really lumbered. I'm determined not to be. Well, you've had my advice. This is the second occasion recently on which I've had to press it upon you. Take notice that I propose to raise my fees. Substantially. This used to be a quiet newspaper. No, I'll find my own way out. You've got work to do. your friends go hunting? You're joking. My friends can't afford it for one thing. And for another? Well, they still wouldn't stay my friends if they took to chasing a wretched creature half across the country for sport. I'd rather sooner support bullfighting. Let's start again. Who do you know who belongs to the Westdale hunt? Well, there's Ter Teresa Hounslow, mad about horses. Who else? And there's that rather dishy clock, Frank Lucas. Assistant General Manager or some such at Westdale Wolves. <laughs> Tishy Clot. Well, he's good looking, all right. And he's supposed to know all about wharfing and woofing and noils and tops. But a clot. I went out with him once. He's got two topics wool and bloody horses. Don't talk to him. He's like that. What do I talk to him about? This. Well, I've read it. I don't understand it. Well, ask your friend Lucas. But don't tell him you saw it in the paper. But I did. You won't have. The lawyers. Oh. Yeah. Just say you've heard something. And ask if he has. That's right. But ask him if he saw something, too. Corroboration? Mm-hmm. Well, does the Colonel need it? Just in case he's actuated by malice. It's a monstrous suggestion. Absolutely monstrous. Well, it could still be made. And would be if this ever came to court. It's as if this fellow Walters doesn't believe Oh, me. that's not fair. Acting as if I'd made it up. He's merely safeguarding all our interests. Including yours. Certainly, and his own. And yours. My interests are served by telling the truth. I'm not sure that anyone's interests are served by bringing this particular truth out into the open. Certainly not in this way. And the Hunt Committee can't do anything. It's this fellow Grimley, they depend too much on him, on his money. Two of them depend on him for a job, and one of them depends on him for a tenancy. So it can't be done privately? It can't. 
Well, we must do it publicly. Well done. Not hastily. Not riskily. I'd rather come out in the open. <laughs> Uncle, it's victory I'm interested in. Not heroism. How did you hear this? No comment. Then that goes for me too. At least you don't deny it. No comment. Do you deny it? No comment. So it is true. Did you see it happen? No comment. Which means that you did. I didn't but say that. But that's just that what I... it does mean. You did see it, you don't want to say so, but you don't want to tell lies. No. And don't say no comment again, because that could mean you do want to tell lies, see? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Poor Frank. I suppose I should have guessed when you rang. Instead, you thought it was your irresistible charm? Girls have been known to ring me up. And here you are stuck with some filly who doesn't want you for yourself alone. Sorry. You just want the dirt on this little scene? Oh, I said I'm sorry. Let's have another drink and I promise not to mention it again. I'll do it. The quality of sex is... Uh, nothing to do with that. Our company has a rule about entertaining reporters. Always be hospitable to the press. Never let them reciprocate. Let them buy you a drink and they begin to think they're your equals. Miss Jackson. Damn you and your whole horsey world. Well, that wasn't very clever of her, was it? No, but she's young. I think she's only got to twinkle those pretty little legs of hers to get anything she wants. Even you've noticed? Well, with fashion as it is, even I couldn't fail to. But it's no help, is it? No, but it does confirm the Colonel's story. Well, I hope you never doubted it. Uh, Lucas is corroboration of a sort, but we'd need a willing witness. Though, I've decided to change tack, anyway. Have you? Mm. We shall not publish the Colonel's full report, agreed? We can't. Then we are agreed. There's only one paragraph the lawyer will allow. All right, then I suggest we publish that, with two omissions. What? We don't include the Colonel's initials at the end. It wouldn't be fair to him, with the report as truncated as it is. On a second. We take out Grimley's name. Well, who's that fair to? Nobody. I just think it might annoy him. Oh, it will. Newspapers are built on names. All right, then. Let's add as well as subtract. Let's add names. Cram this report with names. Just leave out Grimley's. Oh. And when Mr Arnold Grimley, near millionaire and major local figure, complains, do I refer him to you? If you like. Well, all I could tell Grimley is that the omission of his name was an error. I might even have to sound apologetic. Oh, never do that, dear boy. Never? Never. Admit error if you have to, but no more. And in this case, I don't think you'll even have to admit error. Why not? Because in tomorrow's issue, we're going to annoy Mr Grimley in a very different kind of a way. Get me the editor of the local rag. Walters, I think his name is. Mr. Frank Walters, sir. I've got his number. Just a minute. Sir? Come in here, Miss Fowler. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Grimley. You knew I was going to call the editor of the local rag. Yes. Why? Page 10, sir. Well, what's on page three? What report, sir? Oh, never mind. What's on page ten? Huh? There. The Honourable Miss Tracy Lamb is glad that Mr James Hadley is opposed to blood sports. Oh, I can see that. But he isn't, sir. What? Mr Hadley asks us to point out that his reasons for not joining the Westdale Hunt have, in fact, nothing to do with his attitude to fox hunting. I cannot allow myself to be associated with a hunt as at present constituted, he told the Gazette. Its management is neither as expert nor humane as I would like it to be, so I prefer to defer my membership until the present organisation is changed. It's a bloody challenge. What's on page three, sir? Oh, nothing. Just a report of the meat naming everyone. 
Every fool spectator almost, and not naming me. Mr. Hadley must be clever. Yes. I think so, yes. You still want the editor, sir? No, not just for the minute. I want to think. I've got questions to ask. Oh, page nine is still a mess, that damn travel ad. I've just been reading the new page seven. Oh, yes. That letter, it was last down the column. That's at the top. With a statement. You're stating the obvious. If that statement had been written by anyone else... It been in our news column. But since it was written by Mr. Hadley... Since it was written by a proprietor, it's given its proper prominence no more. I don't understand. Neither as expert nor as humane as I would like it to be. If anyone else had said that, would have said, what do you mean? Who's not expert? Who's not human? He might have said no comment. Oh, don't go on about that. But... And don't go on about questions to your boss. You're my boss. Oh, that'll be the day. But you're letting Hadley be yours. Yes, I don't like Grimley either. Why? He's loud-mouthed and condescending. Oh, Mr. Hadley doesn't That'll do, Sue. So. Yes, sir. Was this the end of it, then? <laughs> Just the beginning, I think. Thank you, but... No, I don't think that. I believe what I said in the newspaper. No more, no less. Well, you must draw what conclusions you like, I'm afraid. Thank you very much for calling. Maxwell? Sir? Did you ask the telephone? I'm out on the estate and you don't know when I'll be back. Just note who calls. Hi, Mr. James. Oh, God. Hard morning. Yeah. The phone hasn't stopped going all day. There's a list of people who called. Mm, very impressive. All complimentary. Well, those are. But there's another list. Mm. All saying you should be ashamed to support. That's right. Well, I'm not taking any more. <laughs> this really is involvement. Good cause. Yeah. I wonder. If you doubt it, why did you? Well, it's not what I planned, you know. I've only been back a week or two, and here I am, involved in a row, taking sides and doing it publicly. I suppose I started this. Yes, you did. Can't say I'm sorry. Grimley's a bounder. Well, we shan't be able to change that. We can shift him. Mm, we'll have to see. I'm afraid you'll have to resign, Uncle. Mm. I shall miss it, you know. We've all got to make sacrifices. Now, let's get your resignation letter drafted. Polite, but I see. Mm, then Walters can do as he threatened and put it on page one. Yes. He'll be forced to ask for Grimley's comments. That's going to be a difficult interview. Wonder who he'll send. Well, not everything will be delegated. This one he'll be forced to do himself. See me? I said the editor on no one. I got that message. No, what do you want? I want to know, as a reporter, if you have any comment to make upon Colonel Chamberlain's resignation from the hunt. No. Very well. I've got a comment to make on your paper, though. For publication? No. What's the record? It'll be on the record by the time you get back to the office. Very mysterious. Perfectly plain. You'll be receiving three cancellations of standing advertisements. Which? Wait and see. <laughs> Let me guess. Wingley Cattle Food, Southwestdale Motors and Morley Travel Services. Correct. Thought so. I'll be quite glad to get rid of Morley Travel Services. Always made a mess of page nine. But not the other two. No, of course not. I rather like the Wingley Cattle Food ad. Stylish. You're not fooling me. And you're not frightening me, Mr. Grimley. That's all, then. It isn't, actually. If I say it's all. We could get very ugly about this. We? The whole world of papers, you know, the free press. Free press? I pay for Without fear or friends. favor, certainly without fear, in the face of a deliberate, even conspiratorial effort to bias. I'm not buying that's all. 
Just not buying space. Well, I hope your timid employees have had the wit to draft their letters carefully. <laughs> I bet you drafted them. They'll all be the same. Oh, we can have some fun with that. By a remarkable coincidence, all three letters are identical. By an equally remarkable coincidence, all three firms involved have one man as major shareholder. That'll be our turn. Plus some strong stuff about freedom and not bowing the knee oh. to money. Have you any comment to make upon that, Mr. Grimley? Get out of my office! Certainly. But I reserve the right to quote that. <laughs> Get me Appleton. Appleton, sir? I'll teach these county bastards. God, it's a desperate throw. Certainly an expensive one. It's rather frightening. Are you tempted? Yes. I thought you would be. Wouldn't you be? Two hundred thousand pounds. A lot of it in cash. How much? That is something for your respective accountants. I'm only a go-between. Shuttling faster and faster. Well, don't make it sound more undignified than it is. Is it too early for a drink? No. Help me, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Moments of crisis, an inch and a half of whiskey is great steadying to the nerves. Oh, hell. It is a temptation. Then succumb. That can often be very pleasurable, as the actress said to the bishop. Or was it the other way round? I shall have to think. Of course, but do it quickly. The offer's open for three days. Giving Grimley control of the next issue of the paper. That's what I imagine he wants and what he's prepared to pay for. Through the nose. Exactly. Which makes it a bribe. Does it? Well, I'm inclined to think so. You've no response to that? My dear James, what is it you want? I came here as your legal advisor to report that a prosperous and prominent local citizen, to wit, Arnold Grimley, was prepared, even anxious, to make you a very substantial offer for a piece of property you own. It's a newspaper. Well, how much difference does that make? In my legal capacity, it makes none. QC say it matters not. And it doesn't to me, as your legal advisor, you, you might as well be selling a horse. But otherwise? And what is otherwise? As a counsellor, an acquaintance. Even as a friend. I'm not a friend, James. The generation gap for a start. And I don't know you, anyhow. Mm. Look, you talked of accountants just now. We're skipping those and we can both do that. Oh. Bloody statisticians. What is your assessment of the true value of the Gazette? Well, value is a useless word in this context. I can tell you what its price would normally be. A cynic is one who knows... Knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. And you can't impress me with these silly aphorisms of a talkative pederast. So, the price. The present bit of park would be, I think, reasonable at £160,000. And Grimley is offering £200,000. So I'm led to believe... Why? He can afford it. He wants to buy peace. Are we hounding him? I think so. You, your uncle and your newspaper are at least attacking him. There's going to be no doubt about that. Why? I don't like him. I don't have so much evidence that you like me. Am I therefore to go in fear and trembling? <sighs> don't be silly. And don't you condescend to me, young man. I'm sorry. Uh, it really is a matter of conscience. Sir. Yeah. Nobody can really help you with that. Well, let me spell it out. We... Now, I speak as your representative and the executive of your father's estate. Mm. Have received an offer for the West Hill Gazette, which is at the very least handsome and some £40,000 more than we had any right to expect. Mm. It's a very large sum of money. It would give you a measure of freedom you couldn't possibly have expected. No, 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 let me finish. The offer comes from a man you don't like. Well, I don't like him either. But it comes at a moment when you or the Gazette have chosen to attack him. Mm. Now, he wants and is wealthy enough not to buy you off, but to buy you out. And the £40,000 over the odds is the bribe. You want me to go back and say you'll sell for 40000 less? I'm sure Grimley would be delighted. Or can we salve your conscience by reducing the sum, should we say, 20000 less? The betrayal would be halved. 
You're drinking my whiskey and I pay your legal fees. Now, don't come the legal advisor bit when you probe my conscience. I'm pointing the issues. Yes, well, you've done that. Thank you, Mr. Appleton. And what are my instructions, sir? Would you be good enough to go and tell Mr. Grimley that the price isn't high enough? He won't pay more. But there's no problem then, is there? I suppose not. I'd rather tell him you had no intention of selling. Yes, you would. But perhaps I have. At a price? Well, I'm experienced enough to know that we've all got our price. Not for everything. Exactly. Now, look, there are some professional things. Some ethical things. A few notional things. And some more purely personal things that neither you nor I would do at any price. Now, I'm not sure that a commonplace weekly newspaper comes under any of those categories. I see. I could telephone Grimley from here. Yes, well, I'd rather you didn't. We mustn't seem too excited, must we? <laughs> hey. To cancel three major adverts. Well, it's medieval. No, a medieval tycoon would have chopped off our heads. Then it's 19th century. <laughs> How agile are the young? What are five centuries to you? I'm not taking it seriously. I don't have to, love. We'll roast Mr. Buccaneering grimly. This is the clumsiest thing he could have done. If only he cancelled his subscription in writing, too. That'd liven up page one. All that attacks on the freedom of the press stuff's going to read a bit solemn. Well, if you're sure. I thought you were the one who didn't care. I hate to see some big shop buy himself. Beauty calls. Westdale Gazette, Susan Jackson. Hello. Miss Jackson, this is important. No doubt. Who is that? Frank Lucas. And before you ring off, I mean important to you. You're not important to me. Ditto. What did you say? I have something important to say about your paper. For publication? If you care about your job and your miserable rag, come round to the Milford Arms within ten minutes. I'll see. You can buy me a drink. That was nice. I'll be there. I go now. I'm enjoying this far too much to keep you late at the office. Thanks. How long will you be here? Well, you're welcome to stay. No, seriously. Oh, this should take about half an hour and another ten minutes to do the first polish. Will you stay here till 6.30? Just 40 minutes from now. That's right. Serious? Well, I could be wrong. You know how often I am wrong. But this time... Feminine intuition. I'd love to be a witch. But this time, by the pricking of my thumbs... Something evil. No, it doesn't fit. You need Milton on that. Shakespeare for Grimley, what a waste. Never. You're not helping me. I do my best. I don't play that corny game. How much more does he want? I don't know. You've got to have some idea. I haven't got to do anything. Certainly not for you. For Hadley, then. I represent him. So far. But I haven't got to do anything for him either. Which doesn't mean that I work for you. Ever. Whatever the price. You mean whatever the price I offer? To me, yes. Mr. Hadley may be less uh, involved. I don't get it. Never mind. I've said my piece. My instructions are the price isn't right. Isn't high enough. Oh, that's too high already. Am I to take that as a withdrawal? No. What's the bastard want? Thank you very much, miss. Thank you. Here's to equality. Thank you for waiting two minutes extra. You said you were coming. And I'm here. And you didn't ask me because of my irresistible charm. Actually, I did. Or at least because I was beastly last time. My fault. Uh, more mine. It's for you. Or for your sake, anyhow. Yes? Yeah. Well, I couldn't say anything, not for publication. Grimley owns our firm very nearly. Very lovely. But that isn't it. What is it, then? I shouldn't know, not even in the firm, let alone tell anyone outside. Least of all a reporter. 
That's why I am telling you. He's going to buy... You can't buy Walters. Who's he? He's going to buy the paper. So, I am authorised to increase your offer by £15,000. No more. Very well. Will he take it? I can't possibly answer that, can I, Mr Grimley? Your opinion. Not for sale. My opinion, I mean. It can't be in this situation. Ethically, professionally, my opinion is available only to Mr Hadley. I could put you out of you business. You can't buy my practice or my firm. I don't give a damn about you. Can I buy that bloody newspaper? I don't know. I mean that. That is my opinion. Free, gratis, but nothing. You expect me to be grateful? Who knows? I'm not paid to know your mind. I'm paid, in part at least, to know Mr Hadley's. And I don't. He'll sell. He'll sell out. Yeah. Maybe. I couldn't work for Grimley. He wouldn't have me. But I wouldn't work for him either. What do I do, please? <laughs> Sue, there are moments when I love you. And I know what I'm saying. So thanks for telling me. I'll go home. Or is your boyfriend waiting? I said thank you to him, too. So go home. And you? Let's have some fun. Stay. Let's talk to our proprietor. I can listen. Be my guest. Yes? Frank Walters. Walters? You're working late tonight? Not particularly. I've just heard a story that concerns us. Us? Concerns me, concerns the Gazette, therefore concerns you too. Well? Are you selling the paper, sir? You are well informed. Thank you. Do you mind answering my question, please? No comment. I'd like to discuss this matter with you. No, thank you. I stand to lose... Mm. You've no idea what I stand to lose. Tell me. Upwards of £50,000, which is what our man is offering over and above a reasonable price. I see. Changes your attitude? It's a lot of money. Mm. So you see my dilemma? I do. I think I'll go and get drunk. Hello? Miss Jackson's here. She might be willing to join me. Drown our sorrows. Any time. Where are you drinking? I, I may be able to decide tonight. Thank you. The boar's head? No, somewhere a bit more plush. <gasps> Milford Arms. Yes, ma'am. Miss Jackson insists on the Milford Arms. That girl's got taste. All right, I'll, uh, I'll try and telephone my decision. Thank you. <sighs> Money is funny, isn't it? Yeah, I'm killing myself laughing. Oh, well, odd then. What would you do for £50,000? Almost anything. Would you? If you mean what I think you mean. Certainly. Without any hesitation. Oh, to be wealthy. Aye. <laughs> Very good, sir. I'll see to it right away, sir. Thank you. Same again. Another large one, sir. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Right here, I'm sorry. So much for equality. Well, I was a bit shattered, you know. Why well, have you met Mr. Walters, my editor? How do you do? We're going to get drunk. Together? Well, that was the general idea, but if you two were... And it can't be a threesome. <laughs> I'm not proud. I'm not either. That's the trouble. If I'm seen drinking with her, it's all right. Just owed Lucas on the make with a dolly. Thanks. But well, I can't be seen drinking with you. Sorry. I need the job I've got. Well, the things some men will do. I'm glad you said that. Now, where's the first drink? Right away, Miss Jackson. It's already been ordered, Miss. That was clever. 
Oh, Look, I said I love you, but I can't run to that. It pet. is the 57, is it? Uh, yes, sir, just as you ordered, sir. Champagne, not a funeral. You're too gloomy, Miss Jackson. This isn't a way. It is for us. You mean? I mean that I've instructed Appleton to tell Mr. Grimley to go and... You know, you're a restraining influence, Miss Jackson. To jump in the lake. That's right, but not until late tomorrow. Might as well let him sweat a bit. Open it, would you? Yes, sir. I am going to get drunk. Why not? With both of us around, you'll come to no harm. And there's always Maxwell. Sober as any careful driver, available to take you home when you're really incapable. Brother, that'll make something for the street to talk about. We could even publish it. Young woman journalist carried into parents' house. We'd liven up page one. Well, by the time we're through with Grimley, it should be lively enough. Now, you are making sure of that, I hope. Is he there yet? Yes, Mr. Grimley. That's how I man. Come Spade. in, son. Come in. Sit down. <clears throat> Sit down. Thank you. Drink? Uh, it's a bit too early in the morning for me, thanks. You don't drink champagne for breakfast, then? That's right. Now tell me a good journalist. Good reporter. Ta. Have I been told right? Well, I'm pretty good for this part of the world. You're valuable to the Gazette. I think so, yes. How valuable? You mean money? <laughs> yeah. That's my business. 25 quid a week. Thereabouts. Is it enough? It's never enough. I've got enough. Congratulations. Well, let's see. 25 quid a week, you're 26, married, two kids. I'll give you 40 quid on the use of a car. What for? The Gazette's been hounding me. A uh, nice hatchet job, though I'm told you asked for it. Can you do a good hatchet job? Well, I'm not as experienced as Mr. Walters. <clears throat> anyway, a hatchet job on who? I mean whom? Several people, several jobs. Such as? Such as Hadley. Such as Chamberlain, such as Walters. I think you're out of your mind, frankly. You heard I tried to buy the Gazette. I'm just back off holiday, but I did hear. Oh, well, I hear something else. In confidence. Absolute confidence. No, I'm sorry. You don't want to hear? Not in absolute confidence. I can't afford to. Can you afford to turn down an extra 15 quid a week? And the use of a car. Trust the use of a car. What do I have to do? Much the same as you're doing now. Where do I have but, to do it? Oh, here. In Westdale? In Westdale. But there's only the Gazette. I said in confidence. Well, there's not room for two papers in Westdale. Exactly. Then how? In confidence. Nah, nah, sorry. Good day. Well, I'll have to talk to... Who? Oh. <clears throat> well, the wife. Oh, you're dodging. You'd like to talk to your boss. Well, in all fairness... Has he been fair to me? Well, I don't know. I have no plans for being fair to him. It's an empty threat. He must have known Spence would talk. Well, he had every right to talk, especially as he refused the inconfidence trick. So it's just a threat. Well, I'm not sure. If Grimley could afford to offer you a price so much above the odds, he can afford to take a loss on starting a new paper. Look, you can't start a newspaper overnight. No, but you can have a go in three or four months, especially if you start poaching staff. We just have to wait and see. And listen and look. And keep our staff. Spence, just come in here a moment, would you? Uh, Mr. Walters has convinced me that we owe you a rise. <clears throat> Tom, not as much as Mr. Grimley offered you. Say two fifty a year. Uh, there was also uh, the use of a car. You already used mine. Yes, anything else will have to wait, I'm afraid. Sorry. Well, it's more than I expected anyway. Maybe it's more than you deserve. Well, we've got to be ready for competition. <laughs> 